I read you OU am roaming across your mind. Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much for tuning in to I read you OU am. You're tuned into a brand new segment right here on I read you OU am. And if you're viewing the video streaming that we have on our website, you'll see that in the studios with me today is actually Professor Insinia Dr. Rusli Hamid, the Vice President for Learner Management and Campus Development Open University Malaysia. Welcome Prof to the studios. Okay, terima kasih. Mm-hmm. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh kepada semua pendengar kita. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Now, Prof, uh, you're here to share with us basically about the latest development in OUM, am I right? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Okay, now, one of the... Let, let's just start right away, Prof, yeah? yeah? Okay. And when we talk about OUM, when we talk about... Uh, our development and all that yeah we hear our young bahagia tan sri president again and again he mentions uh, the word learner centeredness it's our credo almost uh, for oum to be a learner centered university now to you prof what does learner centered mean Okay, terima kasih. Thank you very much, Umi. But before that, mm-hmm. before that, you you must not forget uh, uh-huh. that today is Hari Guru. Yes, exactly. Ah, uh, okay. Uh-huh. Jadi uh, sebelum tu saya ingin mengucapkan uh, selamat Hari Guru kepada semua pelajar-pelajar kita di sana dan uh, teruskan usaha-usaha murni kita untuk mendidik anak bangsa supaya menjadi warga yang berguna. Exactly. Ini adalah selaras dengan uh, usaha negara usaha kerajaan untuk menjadikan negara kita sebagai negara maju dalam tahun 2020. Yeah. Okay, now let me answer the, your questions, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, <coughs> uh, Tan Sri, our bahagia, yang berbagai Tan Sri mentioned that we are, uh, he talks about learn, learner-centeredness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, learner-centeredness, it means that um, our learners Our learners need mm-hmm. uh, must be our priority mm-hmm. in uh, in every aspect, mm-hmm. and of course, uh, learners, as you, you are all aware, that uh, our learners uh, comes from a very uh, diversified uh, background mm-hmm. uh, in terms of age, experience, skill, prior learning, as well as uh, the economics background. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we need to take all this into uh, consideration when we design, develop programs, uh, our learning materials, our support services, so that it need it, it meets the learners' requirements. Mm-hmm. Well, in terms of uh, learning materials, uh, I think this is very important. Uh, when we develop uh, the learning material, material, we must have our learners' interests uh, in our mind. Mm-hmm. The module uh, must meet the learners' uh, requirement, mm-hmm. both uh, in terms of the uh, subject matters, and uh, I guess it must be written in simple English, yes. so that uh, it can be uh, easily understood mm-hmm. by uh, our learners. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, the next item would be uh, the our face-to-face uh, tutorial sessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also must be uh, effective and should be able to solve all our learning all the learning difficulties uh, faced by uh, our students, our learners. We must uh, constantly train uh, and also update our tutors. Uh, I mean to train their knowledge, to update them, uh, their knowledge and skills, mm-hmm. and uh, therefore we have to make sure. This is to make sure that uh, our students find the uh, face-to-face uh, tutorial sessions mm-hmm. uh, beneficial uh, to them. Other than that, uh, we are, we should also be looking at the uh, the effectiveness of our e-learning uh, forum. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is also very important. Uh, I guess the forum must be um, engaging, and uh, we must respond to queries uh, uh, by our learners uh, in time. Mm-hmm. You know, we cannot wait for two, three days to respond, mm-hmm. but we have to respond to all the queries. Kalau uh, instantly yes. But of course, uh, we cannot do that. Mm-hmm. But at least. Within the within 24 hours, mm-hmm. that that will a be, reasonable, that time will be good. a reasonable time frame. Mm-hmm. I guess uh, one day, maximum two days. Yeah. 
Uh, other than that, uh, of course, um, we understand that uh, it is not easy to be uh, an, an ODL uh, learner. True. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a full-time environment, it is easy. Mm-hmm, yeah. You only go to lectures. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this case, our students, uh, they have to juggle between uh, work, uh, family life, mm-hmm. and uh, of course, uh, studies. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we are here to, to help them in in the best uh, we can. To the so I guess uh, in this aspect, um, I would welcome. We would welcome any uh, good suggestions mm-hmm. uh, from our our learners. Mm-hmm. Uh, to this, uh, they, they they can forward uh, their suggestion uh, via our uh, ECRM. Eh? Mm-hmm. Now they are using the ECRM only uh, to uh, to you know to put in their complaints or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they can also uh, uh, use ECRM uh, for suggestions, mm-hmm. good ideas, and so mm-hmm. on. They they uh, this is a way uh, to get to us. Mm-hmm. And uh, inshallah, lah, we will. Um, to uh, we'll take uh, immediate actions yes. if we find uh, any good suggestions mm-hmm. from uh, our learners. Mm-hmm. So of course, in order for OUM to be a learner-centered uh, institution, we need the feedback from our learners. Sure, sure. Okay, okay we welcome feedbacks yes. from all of you out there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so after this, we're going to take a small break. After this, Prof Rosli will share more with us on OUM and our latest developments. So stay tuned to our radio OUM, where you can be inspired, be informed, and be entertained. Radio OUM roaming across your mind. Thank you so much for still uh, tuning in to our Radio OUM. You're tuned into a brand new segment right here on our Radio OUM brought to you by the Center for Student Management. And who better to officiate our brand new segment than the Vice President uh, Learner Management and Campus Development Open University Malaysia Professor Senior Dr. Rosli Hamir. Thank so, you. Thank you me. Okay. Yeah. Now Prof, earlier yeah. on you were talking about learner-centeredness and basically Prof is sharing with us about the latest development in OUM. So, being a learner-centered institution, okay, what are the main considerations for OUM when we talk about uh, infrastructure development for our learners? Bro? Okay, thank you, Umi. Okay. Um, well, after listening to the uh, very upbeat uh, music, okay. uh, I guess... Um, you know, our learners are ready to, to hear our latest developments. Okay, uh, well, in terms of uh, infrastructure, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, for information, for your information, mm-hmm. uh, we now have close to uh, 35 learners, uh, uh, learner center, learning center distributed uh, nationwide. And out of these, uh, 20, 20, learn, 20 centers are owned uh, by Open University of Malaysia, OUM. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, uh, I must say to to you that the, the latest, uh, in uh, you know, most of our buildings, they are actually uh, uh, you know, in terms of design philosophy, mm-hmm. they are actually very modern, modern and contemporary. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that is the the concept that, mm-hmm. that we use. And um, now. Um, I mean, the purpose of uh, constructing the learners is uh, the learner centers basically is the, to give uh, a conducive place for for our students to to study. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, in our learning center, we have the various various facilities. Mm-hmm. We have, of course, we have the um, uh, tutorial rooms. We have the meeting rooms, and then we have uh, the computer labs equipped with the uh, latest uh, computer. And then, of course, uh, we have this uh, resource center, and uh, we have the uh, examination hall. And uh, in the all in the new centers, we create um, student lounge. You know, we don't have the student lounge in the old centers, mm-hmm. such as in in, in Kedah and so on. Mm-hmm. Kedah, the in Sungai we don't have the learners lounge. Mm-hmm. But in all our new centers, we have the students lounge. Mm-hmm. I think students lounge is uh, is very important uh, because this is where the student can relax. You know, after do the tutorial sessions. They, are, they can go to the students' lounge to relax while waiting for another sessions. 
and then also we can it's a place for them to interact mm-hmm. uh, with other students they, that's where they can discuss the assignment and so on mm-hmm. and uh, you know certain uh, difficult prop uh, subject or difficult things mm-hmm. difficult uh, assignment they, they can discuss uh, we provide the round table with chairs and all that in the dinner lounge mm-hmm. and of course uh, they have the connectivity Mm-hmm. also uh, in, in the lunch mm-hmm. so i think uh, we are doing that for all the le- uh, other centers as well mm-hmm. so we are also in the process of um, renovating all other centers mm-hmm. uh, to to equip with this uh, with the students lounge mm-hmm. so that that is a uh, on- ongoing ongoing that's ongoing mm-hmm. um other than that uh, we are also um, Uh, what we call constructing uh, new learning centers mm-hmm. all over the country um, we have uh, for your information mm-hmm. we have the uh, new learning centers mm-hmm. uh, been built in uh, Alusta uh, Alusta mm-hmm. right in the middle of the city center mm-hmm. we have the uh, Alusta uh, uh, learning center mm-hmm. um, In fact, it is uh, close to Pekan Rabu. If you know Alusta very well, mm-hmm. I, our center uh, used to be called. I think we bought uh, from uh, one one owner. Mm-hmm. Uh, that building used to uh, house uh, a departmental store. Mm-hmm. Uh, I call. I think it was Hang Kyu Jaya <laughs> yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So we we bought. We just bought the building, mm-hmm. and uh, inshallah, we will uh, renovate the building mm-hmm. and hopefully. Uh, we can uh, use the building by next year mm-hmm. and other than that uh, we also bought um, a building in Penang mm-hmm. near Sabran Jaya mm-hmm. uh, we bought two shop lots mm-hmm. uh, that can house an additional about additional 18 classroom mm-hmm. uh, for the uh, Penang, Penang learning center mm-hmm. and uh, another building in Miri is under construction as well as in Tanganu and Wangsa Maju. Mm-hmm. So by the end of next year we should have about 22 learning center owned by OUM mm-hmm. by by next year. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that that includes the learning center that are being uh, developed as well as, as being well updated. As well as being updated and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, this is an ongoing process, a continuing process. Uh, with the with the I mean with the aim of get, getting uh, or giving the best to to our learners mm-hmm. the best learning environment to to our learners mm-hmm. so we're back at learner centeredness yes <laughs> it is <laughs> okay yeah. we're going to take a small break first stay tuned yeah. to iRadio OUM professor will share a bit more with us after the break Radio OUM roaming across your mind. Thank you so much for still listening in to today's installment of OUM Cares. And like I mentioned earlier, our segment today has a very special guest. We have Professor Insinia Dr. Rosli Hamir, our VP for Learner Management and Campus Development. Okay, now Prof is only able to be with us for half an hour because after this, Prof will go and have other uh, initiatives or develop other initiatives for our learners. Okay, now just. As a parting shot, Prof, what are all your advice to our learners? Okay, uh, thank you, Umi. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, uh, you know, you, you, as I mentioned to you earlier, we do our whatever best uh, to provide the best learning environment to all our learners. Think, taking into considerations all your constraints. But of course, uh, well, in, 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 well, during your your study, you may have some problems. Uh, what I want you to do is to use our ECRM. You know, I think Prof. Uh, after this, uh, Dr. Shanti will be talking to you more on the ECRM, mm-hmm. and also to use our toll-free number. That is one three hundred eight eight seven three hundred. I would like to advise you is that please do not call direct to faculties or um, the finance section or any other other people, other names that you can get from our my contact. 
uh, that's not a good way um, to to come to actually get uh, to us. The best is to go to ECRM where all your queries, all your problem will be recorded. And it is our promise to you that we will try our level best to solve all your problems within one week. Shouldn't be more than one week. The easier problem we can solve it within one day or three days. You know, uh, within, okay, within three days. The easy problem can be done, uh, can be solved within the three days. But if you call the, the 1300 numbers, you will get to our uh, call center and we have five people manning the call center. Uh, that one you probably you can get direct answers, immediate answers. So please use these two channels because these channels are, these communicating channels are meant for you. So, uh, uh, other than that, um, I hope um, our listeners, uh, you enjoy to, to the music selected by uh, our DJ. I think they are all, they are very upbeat, very uh, suitable for, uh, for, a morning, for a morning session. And, uh, and then, um, lastly, I would like to wish you all the best. And uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, any problem, let us know. We will do our best to help you and make sure that you graduate within the stipulated time. And uh, inshallah, I hope to see all of you again and also, uh, I mean, in another sessions of the iRadio or maybe during uh, our coming convocation uh, that, is, that is in uh, June or December this year. InsyaAllah. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan uh, salam sejahtera kepada semua. Alright, so thank you so much Prof. But actually, the segment is not, uh, it's not done yet. We still have one more guest with us in the studio. So if you want to know who that guest is, you need to stay tuned to our radio OUM. Okay, so let me say goodbye to Prof. Thank you so much again. Thank you, me. Thanks okay, a lot. Okay, so bye-bye. stay tuned to our radio OUM. Radio OUM roaming across your mind. Thank you so much for still tuning in to the OUM cast segment. Okay, earlier on, I had with me in the studio Professor Insina Dr. Rosli Hamid, the VP for Learner Management and Campus Development of Open University Malaysia. So if you missed that segment, don't worry, we'll upload it to our YouTube and to our iCast. Okay, now we're on the second half of the segment. Okay, and with me is the Director for Student Management, Center for Student Management, Associate Professor Dr. Santi Raghavan. Okay, so Dr. Santi, welcome to our studios. Thank you, Umi. It's oh. very nice to see you again. Yeah, okay. So, basically, uh, Dr. Santi is here it, It's uh, as an extension or continuation of what uh, Prof. Rosli has already shared earlier. Okay, now, Prof. Rosli was talking more about uh, the uh, OUM being a learner-centered university, about our latest development specifically. Okay, and when we talk about uh, the physical infrastructure, we need to also talk about the, the what we're putting into that physical infrastructure. So, Dr. Santi is going to share with us first and foremost in OUM we always hear this word blended pedagogy okay we're all about the blended pedagogy can you please share with our student elaborate with us on what is meant by blended pedagogy definitely Umi okay what is meant by blended pedagogy now this is the word that's commonly used in open university Malaysia Mm -hmm. now in blended pedagogy there are actually three components Mm -hmm. uh, which are the face-to-face learning Mm -hmm. the online learning and the self-managed learning. So these three components make up Mm -hmm. a blended pedagogy. Mm -hmm. And ideally in OUM, uh, the learner should be participating in all these three components Mm -hmm. to not only be an active learner, but also to be an effective learner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the the different different elements in uh, OUM's blended pedagogy is actually what helps our learner propel, what helps our learner. Now, there's also the self-managed learning, Dr. Sati. Can you you elaborate on that? Okay, Uh sure. Now, as I said just now, Mm -hmm. we have the three components in Mm -hmm. blended pedagogy and one of them being the self-managed learning. Mm -hmm. Now, when we speak about the self-managed learning, we're actually speaking about uh, reading the 
modules that OUM supply to mm-hmm. the learners. Okay, now other than the modules, we also have support, other support in terms of uh, CD-ROMs. Mm-hmm. Um, we have other supports in the form of the digital library, the physical library. Mm-hmm. We also have the subject matter experts, the program coordinators for every program in OUM, mm-hmm. as well as the peers and the tutors. Mm-hmm. So self-managed learning basically means the learner is totally in charge of his his or her own learning mm-hmm. using the modules and also the people around him or her. Mm-hmm. So it, there's no one size fit all solution. It's actually no, you know, uh, as I said, a combination of all three mm-hmm. would be good. So we spoke about the self-managed learning. Mm-hmm. Now, other than the self-managed learning, the other two, uh, yes, ones, the uh-huh. face-to-face uh-huh. learning. Now, face-to-face learning in, I would say, in Eastern culture, mm-hmm. is some is a necessity. Mm-hmm. Okay, we find a lot of students wanting this face-to-face learning because they na beguru. Okay, <laughs> and today with the Teachers' Day celebration and yes. all, I would say that teachers are really important. So in OUM, we have what we call the tutors Mm -hmm. uh, for the undergraduates Mm -hmm. and we have the facilitators for the Mm postgraduates. Now, uh, during the face-to-face learning, you actually have a classroom environment, Mm -hmm. um, a formal classroom. Mm -hmm. Um, It could also be a computer laboratory or a science laboratory. Mm -hmm. And during these uh, face-to-face learnings, uh, the learners um, meet up maybe five or four times Mm -hmm. in what we call uh, tutorials or seminars and there is what we call a direct teaching strategy taking place Mm -hmm. so that's face to face so we've spoken about the self-managed learning Mm -hmm. we just spoke about the face-to-face learning Mm -hmm. and we have one more which is the online learning Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want me to speak about online learning or shall we yeah yeah. okay okay sure and the third combination all Mm -hmm. right which is the online learning now online learning is how the word says the resources are all put online Mm -hmm. they are uploaded Mm -hmm. okay so it's very web web based eh? mm-hmm. so we have what we call the learning objects mm-hmm. the i tutorials you know we are designing and developing them big time in OUM now mm-hmm. We have the multimedia coursewares. We have the modules in the PD, in PDF form, mm-hmm. uh, and as well as other Microsoft Office attachments. Mm-hmm. Yes. So all these are actually what blended learning is all about. Now we're going to take a small break first. After the break, Dr. Santi is going to share with us why OUM is all about blended learning. So if you want to know more, you need to stay tuned to our radio OUM roaming across your mind. Radio OUM roaming across your mind. Thank you so much for still tuning in to the OUM Cast segment bought, brought to you by the Center for Student Management. With me in the studio is Associate Professor Dr. Santi Ragavan, the Director for the Center of Student Management. Okay, now earlier on, Dr. Santi has shared with us about blended pedagogy. Now, the next question, perhaps, Dr. Santi, the relevant question is why do OUM use blended pedagogy? Okay, thanks Umi. Now, the reason why we use a blended pedagogy is basically because it's the best mode for learning, Mm -hmm. especially for adult learners who are working Mm -hmm. like they are in OUM. So, to me, I would say it'd be the best mode of learning. And what is important here is the combination of fitting together Mm -hmm. a variety of media. Mm -hmm. Okay, the combination of fitting together a variety of media or pedagogies Mm -hmm. have been proven effective. This is true uh, research, of course. Uh, We know each of the element or each of the component has its strengths as well as its weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Um, If they are evaluated individually, Mm -hmm. they have their strengths and their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But by combining them, uh, I would tell you that it is the right recipe Mm -hmm. to bring satisfying returns Mm -hmm. for the learners. Mm -hmm. So it's a mix and match. Okay, so now we'll talk about uh, blended pedagogy. Yes, central to our blended pedagogy efforts is actually our online learning management system. We call it MyVLE My here in OUM. Now, for the benefit of our listeners, can you share with us about what is MyVLE? Okay, um, Umi, MyVLE, 
the term mm -hmm. okay uh, it is actually uh, my mm -hmm. virtual learning environment mm -hmm. so we took the v mm -hmm. and the l and the e mm -hmm. and made it into my vle yeah? mm -hmm. so my vle is basically my virtual learning environment now it is a useful tool mm -hmm. i would say not only for learning because i do know that our students use my vle basically for the forums mm -hmm. to communicate with their e tutors okay they come back from their face to face uh, tutorials or seminars and you know they read their modules and then if they have um, questions or queries they go on the my vle forums mm -hmm. uh, but besides using my vle forums mm -hmm. which is uh, for learning uh, we also use the my vle for communication purposes okay mm -hmm. between the learners uh, the tutors as well as the staff of uh, OUM. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I would also probably say that it is um, a one-stop center mm -hmm. for the learner. Mm -hmm. uh, they go into My VLE and they can access a lot of elements mm -hmm. uh, in OUM. Yeah, uh, anytime, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily in, in Malaysia alone, but just about anywhere. And the function and features can be featured. 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, probably I'd like to explain a little bit about the important features mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in the My VLE, Umi, mm -hmm. if, if I may. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, some of the features uh, for learners in My VLE, um, this is very important. Mm -hmm. This is what we call the My Profile. Mm -hmm. Now, many students, when they come to OUM, they fill in the My Profile mm -hmm. and they forget about editing it. Okay. And now that's not good uh -huh. because sometimes we have uh, we need to contact the learners mm -hmm. you know for some reason and uh, sometimes when we try to get the um, information from my profile we find that they have not been updated mm -hmm. so my personal uh, wish for the learners would be uh, please update regularly mm -hmm. all your personal records okay especially your telephone numbers and probably another email that they may, might be mm -hmm. using yeah so other than my profile as a feature mm -hmm. we have another feature a very important feature that we call the e-services mm -hmm. now e-services as you see it means electronic services yes. yeah mm -hmm. now e-services contains all the forms related to online registration mm -hmm. our students they register online mm -hmm. so the form is in e-services mm -hmm. um, we also have the forms for course deferment mm -hmm. for credit transfer um, change of location sometimes they are studying in Kuala Lumpur and due to work um, you know uprooting they are now in Penang mm -hmm. so they want to change their learning center mm -hmm. location the form is also there mm -hmm. okay uh, exam registration very important feature mm -hmm. they would like to register for the exam uh, sometimes they add and drop mm -hmm. and also for other admission and uh, record material they are all kept in e-services mm -hmm. Okay, now um, another feature perhaps that I would like to share with you, Umi, and also all the listeners out there, mm -hmm. is this feature that we call My Course mm -hmm. and the Quick Links. Mm -hmm. Okay, now My Course is how it says, mm -hmm. the, these are the courses that I have registered for. Mm -hmm. So it contains all the courses that the students the learners have registered for the semester mm -hmm. as well as the online discussion mm -hmm. forum and lastly probably what I would like to uh, let the students know mm -hmm. about the feature in my VLE would be the eCRM mm -hmm. now I'm repeating what the vice president mentioned just now mm -hmm. okay professor Rosley emphasized the use of eCRM mm -hmm. now eCRM is a platform it's a channel for the learners to seek help yeah. or to provide suggestions you know sometimes our learners being adults um, they, they sometimes have issues or matters that they want to clear with OUM mm -hmm. but sometimes they have good suggestions for us too mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. they can actually give us good ideas how mm -hmm. to improve our systems so you can use the ECRM not only to seek help mm -hmm. but also to perhaps provide suggestions for mm -hmm. OUN mm -hmm. I assure you we read all mm -hmm. okay uh, they can also uh, use ECRM to put up complaints mm -hmm. uh, as well as even to give compliments we are ready to to, <laughs> to receive compliments mm -hmm. we, we do 
do receive quite a bunch of compliments from our learners you know i'm pleased to say that and usually these compliments we forward mm-hmm. to the units or the departments that actually deserve it yes. um so i think that's about it concerning the my vle mm-hmm. as the uh, one stop uh, center mm-hmm. for learners mm-hmm. okay now uh we're going to take a small break first but uh, dr santi will still be with us after the break so if you want to know more about the learning environment here no you am in it is the to our radio o u m roaming across your mind Radio OUM roaming across your mind Still tuned in to the OUM cast segment Brought to you by the Centre for Student Management Okay, now we're talking about uh, my, VL, my VLE Or the My Virtual Learning Environment With Dr. Santi Director of CSM Okay, now Dr. Santi, can you share with us Some of the functions or features Of My VLE? Okay, uh, thanks Umi Now, one of the very most uh, important function or feature of my vle i would say the online forum mm-hmm. okay now uh, the online forum is um, used by generally a, a majority number of our learners mm-hmm. if they don't then it's high time for them to start using yeah, them okay because it is truly a platform for the e tutor as well as the learners mm-hmm. to communicate and exchange ideas mm-hmm. and this communication and, and exchanging of ideas generally are to improve uh the understanding of the subject matter mm-hmm. so i would say that the online forum is probably um one of the most important function and feature of the my vle mm-hmm. now apart from that there's also the the part where the student can get access to educational resources am i right so the learning materials perhaps can you share with us about yes, that yes yes umi now um in my vle you also get uh, what we call the educational resources yeah mm-hmm. uh, such as the learning material mm-hmm. as well as the link to the digital library mm-hmm. now no student in oum can get by without uh, seeking assistance from the digital library okay mm-hmm. now um there are a few educational resources that can be accessed mm-hmm. through the my vle uh, such as for example as i said just now the digital library we mm-hmm. call it the tansri dr abdullah mm-hmm. sanusi digital mm-hmm. library we also have uh, the maths uh, resource center mm-hmm. for those of you who are um, well not too good in mathematics mm-hmm. weak in mathematics then you should seek uh this uh, maths resource center yeah mm-hmm. now um other than maths english also happens to be a problem i wouldn't say a big problem but mm-hmm. it is a problem for some of our learners mm-hmm. now for those of you who need uh help in english we have the e gate mm-hmm. all right we also have what we call the open educational resources mm-hmm. uh we have meet your life mm-hmm. we have the i lectures we have the html based modules we have learning objects mm-hmm. we have you in i radio mm-hmm. and uh, we also have mobile learning mm-hmm. so that's quite a variety of um, educational resources for our learners mm-hmm. we are still um, designing and developing more Mm-hmm. Okay, so it, it's it's very easy to see that that it, this can be very overwhelming to our learners, and of course, uh, since the majority of OUM learners are actually working adults, and some of them uh, have left school for a long time, some of them are not familiar with using computers or even the internet at that yeah as their primary source of learning. So, Dr. Uh, Sandy, what are what is Well, well, what's your advice to these learners? Okay, now mm-hmm. first and foremost, they have to change their mindset. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have seen learners in OUM. I mean, I came to the university in two thousand and one, so internet was readily available, but mm-hmm. not many were um, accessible to it. You know, mm-hmm. and and we saw how our adult learners uh, jumped. with the mouse okay uh, but what is important is it you know we it's been more than 10 years that mm-hmm. we have been in the odl environment yeah mm-hmm. um i think learners who come to oum they have to change their mindset mm-hmm. so when they enroll they have to accept that oum is all about open and distance learning so that's first and foremost mm-hmm. um and uh, they must also realize that most of the contact will be done 
online. Mm-hmm. We rarely use postal communication, mm-hmm. you know. So everything is done online. Uh, and by changing their mindset, it will be also easier for the learners to adapt to the concept of open and distance learning. Mm-hmm. Um, another probably uh, advice would be uh, this is especially for the uh, new learners yeah mm-hmm. we have what we call the bengkel kemahiran belajar mm-hmm. now this is actually a learning skills workshop mm-hmm. uh, they may have left school for a long long time mm-hmm. they may have forgotten how to take notes mm-hmm. They may have forgotten how to manage their stress. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might have also forgotten how to manage their time. Mm-hmm. So we focus on these things for the new learners in what we call the Bengkel Kemahiran Pelajar mm-hmm. or BKB in short. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is a program specifically designed and developed for new learners mm-hmm. to get an idea about what studying in OUM is all about. Mm-hmm. So they will get this big picture about how to study in OUM mm-hmm. and what they need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, my third advice, and uh, you know, uh, and I think this is very important, uh, would be probably that the learners have to explore the system. They have mm-hmm. to explore my VLE. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's huge. But it's not scary, you know. It's it's really um, quite interesting, I would say. Uh, so explore the system, uh, be adventurous, you know. Go in, do this, do that. My really doesn't bark, it doesn't <laughs> bite. So they're pretty safe. Um, they will be surprised. Our learners will be surprised how easy it really is. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Dr. Santi, we only have like three minutes left on the clock. Okay, it's almost at the end of the segment. So, uh, just to end our segment today, what is your hope for our learners? Uh, my hope, okay, the semester May has just started. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that uh, I have all my best wishes mm-hmm. uh, to all the learners out there for this May semester. I would like them to have a beautiful journey in learning Mm -hmm. and to those of you who are new Mm -hmm. to OUM welcome on board I would uh, you know, I hope they have a satisfying uh, learning journey with us. Mm-hmm. And for all those who's graduating in June, mm-hmm. I would say Shabbos. Yeah. I would love to see you, uh, you know, receiving your scroll. Uh, we'll meet you guys in June in PWTC. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's it for OUM Cast for today. Thank you so much, Dr. Santi, for spending your time with us. Thank you, me. Thank you for having me today. Okay, so to all you listeners out there, you stay tuned to our radio OUM because more interesting segments are up ahead. This is me, Hanim, signing off for OUM Cast. Stay tuned to our radio OUM, roaming across your mind.